so industrial relation means the relationship between the employer and the employee the relationship between the organization the relationship between the trade union and the employers so the parties the three main parties which are involved in the industry that is the employer employee and the trade union they all are having a cordial relationship or a good relationship among them that will be known as the industrial relationship what kind of relationship it may be it may be good it may be bad whatever the may, may be the thing it is known as the industrial relation so let's go by its definition industrial relation means relationship between the employer and the employee in course of employment in industrial organization so that is in the industrial organization whatever is going in the industrial organization that in that course of or, uh, relationship in that course of employment it may be good it may be bad it may be so so it may be average it may be worst that may be known as the industrial relationship so koi bhi relationship between the employer and the employee and the trade union employer and the employee is the main thing because employees may se hi nikal ke aata hai trade union so that is known as the industrial relationship industrial relationship is used to denote the collective relationship between the management and the workers so that is a combined relationship of the employer and the workers of the management now the employer may be known as the management also theek okay? hai so management or employees ka relationship management or workers the relationship us sab cheezon ko collective relationship ko hum kya kahenge it will be called as industrial relationship so ir is used to cover such aspect of industrial life as trade union collective bargaining trade union collective bargaining workers participation in management discipline and industrial dispute so all these aspects are covered in industrial relationship that is the collective bargaining workers participation and management means trade unionism to jab kuch log uh, jo workers the aur employees the jo ikatthe ho ke ek union bana lete hain to usko kya kehte hain trade union so trade union kya hoti hai collective bargaining means dono parties teeno parties theek hai ya dono parties wo ikatthi ho ke which two parties i am talking of i am talking of the management and the ट्रेड यूनियन दे सेट टूगेदर एंड दे डू दी कलेक्टिव बार्गेनिंग कलेक्टिव बार्गेनिंग मीन्स कोई भी एक इशू होगा उसको रिजोल्व करने के लिए दे सेट टूगेदर एंड दे कम टू अ कॉमन रिजल्ट सो दैट इज नोन एज कलेक्टिव बार्गेनिंग देन वर्कर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन मैनेजमेंट दैट हाउ द पीपल हाउ द वर्कर्स हाउ द एम्प्लॉयज दे आर पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द मैनेजमेंट प्रोसेस सो दैट इज वर्कर्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन मैनेजमेंट डिसिप्लिन एंड इंडस्ट्रियल इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट मीन जो भी डिस्प्यूट जो भी प्रॉब्लम इंडस्ट्री में अगर हो रही है बिट बिकॉज ऑफ द एम्प्लॉयज या बिकॉज ऑफ द मैनेजमेंट दे इज ऑल आर नोन एज द इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट सो डेफिनेशन पार्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू जे टी डेनलॉप इंडस्ट्रियल रिलेशन आर द कॉम्प्लेक्स इंटर रिलेशनशिप इंटर रिलेशन अमंग मैनेजर्स वर्कर्स एंड द एजेंसीज ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट सो इन सब के बीच में जो रिलेशनशिप होता है उसको हम क्या कहते हैं इट इज नोन एज इंडस्ट्रियल रिलेशनशिप नेचर ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल रिलेशनशिप आई आर इज कंसर्न विद द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द मैनेजमेंट एंड द वर्कर्स एंड द रोल ऑफ द रेगुलेटरी मैकेनिज्म इन रिजॉल्विंग एनी डिस्प्यूट इंडस्ट्रियल डिस्प्यूट सो रोल ऑफ द रेगुलेटरी मैकेनिज्म मीन्स आई एल ओ इंडस्ट्रियल इंडस्ट्रियल लेबर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट इज वन काइंड ऑफ एजेंसी देन एनी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज the uh, these industries which uh, these uh, agencies which are uh, you know regulating the uh, formation of the trade union which are regulating the working of the employees which are regulating the uh, basically monitoring how the employees are working how the management is treating their employees so these regulatory bodies they are keeping a check upon the industrial relationship under ir participative management employee development and employer remuneration employee safety and health hub major aspect which are covered in industrial relationship next features of industrial relationship industrial relationship are outcomes of employment relationship in an industrial enterprise these relationship cannot exist without two parties namely the employer and the employees industrial relationship exists 
only and only because of two parties that is the employer and the employees industrial relationship system creates rules and regulations to maintain harmonious relationship so basically why industrial relationships are maintained so that proper procedure is followed upon proper rules and regulations are created so that the normal relationship harmonious relationship are being uh, created among the two parties that is the employer and the employees the government intervenes to shape the industrial relationship through laws regulation uh, through laws rules agreements terms cart uh, characters etc so basically the government is going to come it in between these industrial relationship are going to come it be come between these two agencies that is the employer and the employees so that they can check they can have a check upon how the industrial relationship among these two parties are going on how the employer is treating his employees and how the employees are working in the organization so clear with the concept of industrial relationship any doubt till now no ma'am now several parties are involved in the industrial relationship system the main parties are the employees and their associations employees and the trade union and the government these three parties interact within economic and the social environment to shape the industrial relation structure now there are many other parties who can come over there but trade union is the one which is from the uh, from the employee side and the government agencies which come together and these three parties interact within each other upon the social and the economic aspect so that the proper industrial relationship can be structured upon now industrial relationship are a dynamic and developing concept not a static one so it is a dynamic one it is a static uh, it is industrial relationship is such kind of concept which keep on changing because there are many changes in the rules and the regulations because there are many changes in the employment part so these changes they keep on happening so it is not static it is not going to remain the same it's keep on changing they undergo the changes with the changing structure and the scenario of the industry as and when the changes occur so they keep on moving with the changing structure as the structure is changing they keep on moving so they keep they do not remain the same whenever the requirement is there so they change industrial relationship includes both industrial relation and collective relationship industrial relation means the relationship between the employer and the employee collective relationship means wo ikatthe ho ke apne relation ko acha banana chahte hain acha rakhna chahte hain to usko kehte hain collective relationship uske liye chahe unko kahin na kahin pe bargaining karni pade kahin na kahin pe samjhauta karna pade so that's why they can maintain a cordial relationship so cordial relationship is known as collective relationship now these are the objectives of industrial relationship to maintain the industrial democracy based on participation of labor and management and gain of industry so that is to maintain the proper environment for proper democracy proper rules and regulations in the industrial relationship then to raise the productivity by reducing the tendency of high labor turnover and absenteeism high labor turnover means the number of the employees who are leaving the organization so we need to find out the uh, reason why these people are leaving the organization so how it will be done it will be done with the help of a proper industrial relationship and absenteeism why people are not coming to their jobs why they are taking so much of leave why they are uh, without informing they are not coming to their work so that is known as absenteeism so why absenteeism is occurring because one of the another reason that is they don't have a cordial relationship in the industry itself next to ensure worker participation in management of the company by giving them a fair say in the decision making and framing policies so to ensure the workers participation in management workers participation in management means that whenever the management is going to take any kind of decision whenever the management is going to uh, Uh, you know going to decide upon some important topic so workers should be included over there so workers uh, you know decisions workers uh, 
participation should be involved over there workers opinion is to be taken upon so that they can uh, feel that they are the part of the organization itself next is to establish a proper channel of communication proper channel of communication means there should be a fair and the transport uh, fair and transparent communication between the management and the employees so management should tell clearly to the workers what kind of new policies are coming what decisions have been taken what new things are going to happen and workers should inform the management that what problem they are facing what is good what is bad what needs to be improved so all those things are to be informed to the are informed to the management on time next is to increase the morale and the discipline of the employees so um, um, morale and the discipline of the employees means that the employees they must be felt affiliated that okay we are being recognized over here unko morally unko support karna chahiye they should be motivated that yes they are doing very good and they need to perform best out of it and yes they need to remain disciplined there should be a proper way of working proper discipline should be there on the organization to safeguard the interest of the laborers as well as the management by securing the highest level of mutual understanding and goodwill between the all the sections in all industries so basically what industrial relationship do industrial relation makes the best relation among the uh, employees and the management in the organization by providing a high level of mutual understanding so there is a mutual understanding between the management between the employees between the employees and the management because they trust each other so a level of trust should be there so that they can believe upon any of the policies which are given by the management and the goodwill between all the sections in a industry next to avoid all forms of the industrial conflict so as to ensure industrial peace by providing better lab better living and working standards for the workers so industrial conflict should be removed the fight should be removed if there is any kind of conflict that need to be uh, removed upon and a proper way of working and a proper way of living should be maintained over there so proper way of working standards should be maintained next is importance of industrial relationship uninterrupted production but you any doubt till now so basically under the importance of industrial relationship one is the uninterrupted production that is that the production should be continuous so this continuous production would only happen when the workers are happy they are going to work very good fine and they their rights are being recognized by the manager and the manager is going to give them the uh, importance over there they are being recognized over there then reduction in the industrial dispute how the industrial disputes are being uh, reduced upon if the good industrial relation are there then automatically the strikes the lockdowns the grievances now what are the strikes the puri ki puri ऑर्गेनाइजेशन बंद की कर दी जाती है एंड एम्प्लॉय स्ट्राइक पे बैठ जाते हैं लॉकआउट जब कंपनी को ताला लगा के सब जो अंदर है जो लोग अंदर है उनको अंदर रहने दिया जाता है सो दैट इज लॉकआउट सो इट इज कम्प्लीटली लॉक द पॉन ग्रेवियंस जब उनके अंदर कोई भी कोई ना कोई गुस्सा होता है कोई प्रॉब्लम होती है सम प्रॉब्लम इज देयर विच इज नॉट बींग सॉर्ट आउट सो दैट काइंड ऑफ ग्रेवियंस इज ओवर देयर तो ये सब चीजें क्या रिफ्लेक्ट करती है industrial dispute to reflect that yeah industrial dispute will only and only reduce when there is a good industrial relationship so high morale good industrial relationship improve the morale of the employees and motivate the workers to work more and better so that is for the good high morale next is reduce wastage good industrial relationship are maintained on the basis of the cooperation and recognition of each other so they cooperatively work with each other they recognize each other it helps to reduce the wastage of the material manpower cost etc 
and it help in the economic growth and development and next are the cause of the poor economic relationship cause of the poor economic relationship means the kaun kaun se causes hain jo industrial relationship ko poor kar dete hain so that first cause is the economic cause when there is not such kind of infrastructure when the infrastructure is not good when the plants are not good when the machinery is not good poor layout is there the employees are not satisfied while working in the organization fine so lack of benefits are there absenteeism is more salary is not good so these all things lead to the poor industry relationship and that causes the economic cost just because of money there is not a good relationship among the people over there go read this point when there are unfair practices when there are unfair promises the promises are not true the fault promises are being done with the employees by the management or by the trade union over there so that is the uh, cause of the poor industrial relationship it means unko galat information di ja rahi hai ya unke sath galat promises kiye ja rahe hain so like your you know salary will be increased or ye ye benefits aapko milenge so fault promises are being done with them so that is the cause of the organizational cause another is the social cause uninteresting nature of the work is the main cause of the social cause of the poor industrial relationship dissatisfaction with the job and the personal life so basically social cause are those cause which are over there because of their society now society means like uninterested uh, nature of the work there is some kind of work which i don't like but i need to do it fine so that is i'm not doing that work happily so that can be one cause another may be the society is not uh, you know uh, dissatisfaction with the job or there is dissatisfaction in my personal life so due to my personal life is disturbed my home life is disturbed my way of working over there would also be disturbed so that can be the another kind of cause so these are known as the social causes then psychological causes lack of job security my job is not secure fine um, recognition non recognition of the merits or the performances poor relationship inter relationship between the employer and the employees unsatisfactory relationship psychological problem might be my manager is not recognizing me my manager is not giving me uh, the proper incentives fine uh, there is law uh, there is lack of job security my job is not secure i don't know when they are going to kick me out of the organization when i will lose my job so these kind of all causes they are known as the psychological causes next are the political causes multiple union inter union rivalries weaken the trade union so basically the trade union relationship is weakened because of the political interference over there defective trade union system prevailing in the country has been one of the most responsible cause for the industrial relationship in the country so because of the political cause politics is there fine political parties they are involving in the organization they are interfering over there inter union relationship is prevailing over there so that time that is the cause of the political causes so clear with the causes of poor industrial relationship what are the different different causes any doubt मैम पॉलिटिकल पॉलिटिकल एक्सप्लेन कर ऑल दैट काइंड ऑफ ऑफ व्हिच आर जस्ट बिकॉज़ पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज राइट लाइक एनी ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज वर्किंग सो पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज आर इंटरफेयरिंग ओवर देयर राइट लाइक पॉलिटिकल एनी ऑफ द पॉलिटिकल लीडर कम्स दैट यस आई नीड दिस काइंड ऑफ वर्कर्स टू वर्क फॉर मी ओनली Fine or any other kind of political interference in the organization, any kind of political you know interference or new rules just to be implemented in the that kind of organization just because of the benefit which the political parties they are going to get. So that is all because of the political interference. Like any of the political leaders, they keep a share in the organization. क्योंकि पॉलिटिकल लीडर्स वो पावर में होते हैं वो अपनी पावर को यूज करते हैं एंड वो कहीं ना कहीं पे ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में दे जस्ट इंटरफेयर ओवर देयर जस्ट टू गेन प्रॉफिट आउट ऑफ सो दैट इज नोन एज द पॉलिटिकल इंटरफेरेंस उनको धक्के से कहा जाता है कि ये सारे वर्कर्स जो है वो हमें ही वोट डालेंगे 
right so these kind of problems they are just because of political problems clear with this yes ma'am okay next are the suggestions to improve the industry relationship or how the industry relationship can be improved first is the sound pol personal policies so policies and procedures which are related to the industrial relationship they which are related to the employees as well that must be created in a proper way that must be fair and transparent it must be informed to everyone so policies and procedure concerning the compensation transfer and promotion etc of the employees should be fair and transparent they must be fair and they must be transparent all the policies and the rules related to the industrial relationship should be fair and transparent to everybody in the enterprise and to the union leaders so these policies and rules they must be prepared in keeping in view all the parties together next are the participative management employers should associate workers and the union in formulation and implementation of hr policies and practices so that is the participative management so employers should be associated with the workers at the union while formulating any of the hr policies so that is the participative management participative management means everyone is going to participate means the workers the employer the employee the management they all are going to participate in making any kind of important decision it doesn't mean that only the management is going to take the important decisions everyone will be involved over there next is the responsible union a strong trade union is an asset to the employer the trade union should adopt a responsible rather than the political approach to the industrial relationship so jo trade union hai jo employers ne apni trade union banayi hai so trade union should work for the betterment of the employees over there they should work for the proper relationship among the employers and the employees rather than having some political approach ye nahi hai ki uske piche koi leader hoga leader hoga any political leader is involved over there in the working of the organization so trade union should only and only work for the proper and the betterment of the employees over there next is the employee welfare employee welfare the employee should recognize the need for the welfare of the workers they must ensure the reasonable wages satisfaction working condition and other necessary facilities for the labor the management should have a genuine concern for the welfare and the betterment of the working class so employee welfare should be the main concern over here so employees should be recognized their needs should be recognized they should have given a proper salary proper wages they should have such kind of working condition in which they feel satisfied that okay we are happy with our working condition means a proper ventilation proper light proper drinking of water proper tea uh, proper kind of snacks are given canteens are given so all those things would come into the facilities which are provided or the working conditions which are provided to the employees over next are the grievance procedure a well established and properly administered system committed to the timely and satisfactory redressal of the employees grievances can be very helpful in improving the industrial relationship just so grievance procedure means be a well established and a properly administered system committed to the timely and satisfactory redressal of the employee grievances can be very helpful in improving the industrial relationship okay grievance procedure means if any kind of grievance is there what is grievance if any kind of problem or issue is there between the employer and the employees on upon one of the another reason then these jo uh, these grievances these problems they must be sold out they must be sorted out within time if they will keep on uh, taking long time if they will keep on lingering upon then it won't be solved and it would give a rise to the another kind of problem so jo bhi problem hai usko jaldi se jaldi problem ko solve kare and apne jo employees hai unko satisfy kare so that will help in a good industrial relationship 
then is the constructive attitude then is the constructive attitude both the management and the union should adopt a positive attitude towards each other the management should recognize the union as the spokesman as the spokesman of the workers grievances and should customize their interests the employer should satisfy each and every problem over there so they should have a cordial relationship among themselves they should have a constructive attitude constructive attitude means they must have a positive attitude among themselves so that they can uh, work and they can work for the betterment of each other next creating a proper communication channel to avoid the grievances and misunderstanding among the employees so proper communication channel means the the policies the procedures uh, any kind of talks any kind of you know information that should pass among all the levels of the organization from the management to the workers and from the workers to the management if there is some problem so that must be informed over there and that must be clearly communicated education and training imparted to the employees so proper kind of education should be given education doesn't mean providing a degree if they are going to work upon some kind of machine so proper training should be given they must be educated that okay this machine is going to work for these these things it is going to help in the, such a situation these are the conditions in which this machine can work or any other aspect if for which the information is to be provided to the employee so they must be educated over there so next are the parties to the industrial relationship parties which are involved in the industrial relationship so first is the employees employee association and the government then inside uh, at the side of the employer it is employer employer association court and the tribunal now employees means the employees who are working over there employer who is taking care of the employment over there employee association means the representative of the employees and the government government policies government procedure government agencies they all will be the part from the government employer association are the people who are involved who are going to represent the employees over there court and the tribunal means the court if there is any kind of case if there is any kind of problem between the employer and the employee so that will go to the court so court is going to decide upon upon the issues unitary approach a unitary approach is grounded in the mutual cooperation individual treatment now these are the different approaches to industrial relationship now unitary approach is one kind of approach which is to the industrial relationship so unitary approach is the is grounded in mutual cooperation individual treatment team work and shared goals so that is going to work upon the sharing part that is going to work upon the team work over there workplace conflict is seen as a temporary abbreviation resulting from the poor management employees who do not mix well with the organization culture union cooperation with the management so workplace conflict only comes because of the poor relationship among the employees because of the poor management because of the poor cooperation and poor culture between the union and the workers over there next the management right to manage is accepted because there is no we they feel feeling underlining the exemption in that everyone benefits when the focus is on the common interest and promotion of the harmony based on the reactive strategy so management rights to manage is to accept because they are not going to they are not going to take the things individually they are going to work for the mutual relationship they are going to work for the common interest now how this common interest will be taken care of this common interest will be taken care of with the promoting the harmony among the people over there with having a good strategies with having a good relationship among them next is the pluralism next approach is the pluralism approach that is known as the conflict approach conflict approach or the pluralism believes 
belief in the existence of the one or the more ruling principle giving rise to the conflict of the interest now they they basically work upon the ruling principle some of the ruling principle okay this rule will only prevail we are going to work upon only this and this rule so that is kind of the only one rule is going to prevail over there pluralistic approach to industrial relationship a re relationship accept conflict between the management and the workers as unwettable because continue uh, continually through the various institutional arrangement like the collective bargaining consolidation and arbitration etc and is in fact considered essential in innovation and the growth so pluralistic approach basically work on the collective bargaining part so they are going to work together and they are going to arrange the things and they are going to sort out the things so conflict approach is basically to conflict they will they will take care of the rules okay this rule is going to prevail and the conflict is to be resolved so for every conflict there will be one rule there will be one regulation one policy is to be maintained it perceive uh, it perceives organization as coalition of computing interest where the management role is to meditate among the different interest groups so they are going to work upon the benefit of the different interest group what one group says as per that interest group the uh, rules and the regulations are to be taken the meditation is to be done upon that it perceived trade union as the legitimate representative of the employees at first it also perceived perceives stability of the industrial relationship as the product of conciseness and compromise between the management and the union so basically the trade union is over there as the legitimate representative of the employees at first so they are going to work for the employees at first and they are going to work for the proper relationship among them how this proper relationship is going to come with the help of the compromise they are going to compromise on the various issues if there is some problem they are going to compromise they will come to a common solution and they will work upon it next is the marxist approach marxist approach like pluralistic also regards the conflict as inevitable but sees it as a product of the capitalistic society where as the pluralist belief that the conflict is inevitable in all the organizations from marxist industrial relationship has the wide meaning for them conflict arises not because of the rift between the management and the workers but because of the division of the society between those who own the resources and those who have only labor to offer so uh, marxist says that there is conflict between the two parties because of the resources these resources are mine fine right? if i say these resources are mine you are no one to touch these resources you are no one to touch my these these kind of problem so only because of these things the problem come so marxist says that the conflict will come because of the division in the society between those who own the resources and those who have only labor to offer and another has only labor to offer i can just work upon मेरा खुद का कोई सामान नहीं है मेरी खुद की कोई फैक्ट्री नहीं है मुझे तो लेबर ही करनी पड़ेगी सो बिकॉज ऑफ दीज काइंड ऑफ रीजन जब ये फीलिंग कर दी दे दी जाती है सब लोगों को वहां पे तो देर इज अन्फ्लिक्ट ओवर देयर मार्क्सिस्ट अप्रोच दस फोकस ऑन दी टाइप ऑफ दी सोसाइटी इन विच एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फंक्शन सो कौन सी सोसाइटी में ये ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फंक्शन कर रही है उसके ऊपर वो ज्यादा स्ट्रेस अपॉन देता है इंडस्ट्रियल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट इज दस equated with the political and social in un unrest trade union are seen both in the labor reactions to exploration by capitalist as well as the weapons to bring about the revolutionary social changes so he says that there should be a social changes upon upon them there should be political and social uninterest should be there so political and social uninterest means the trade union should not be imparted with any of the पॉलिटिकल पार्टी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी का किसी भी पॉलिटिकल पार्टी का कोई इंटरफेरेंस नहीं होनी चाहिए ट्रेड यूनियन के बीच में एंड ट्रेड यूनियन को जो है वो सिर्फ लोगों के इंटरेस्ट मीन वर्कर्स के इंटरेस्ट के लिए बोलना चाहिए सो दे शुड नॉट बी एनी इंटरफेरेंस ऑफ एनी ऑफ दी सोशल वर्कर और एनी ऑफ दी पोलिटिकल वर्कर ओवर हाँ जी एनी प्रॉब्लम विद अप्रोच स्टिल नाउ
No, ma'am. Next is the system approach. System approach was developed by J.P. Dunlop of the Harvard University in 1958. According to this approach, individuals are the part of an ongoing but independent social system. So they are working for the ongoing system, but uh, ongoing social system. The behavior, action, and the role of the individual are shaped by the culture of the society. So how society is working as per the working of the society, as per the culture of the society, the system approach is working. The three elements of the system approach are the input processes and the output. So what is input, what is processes, and what is output, they are being considered by the uh, system approach itself. System provides a cue, a signal to the individual about how one should act in a proper situation. The institution, the value system, and the other characteristics of the society influence the process and determine the output and response to the individual. So they are basically working with the individuals only. The basis of this theory is to, is that the group coherism is provided by the common ideology shaped by the social factors. Now these social factors are being basically shaped by the system approach. System approach says that in every situation there is some cue that how a person should behave in particular situation. So as per this understanding of the behavior in a particular situation, according to the inputs given, according to the processes and out, according to the output being received. So that is known as the system approach. A facility is provided to the employees, employees in organization. Basically in an organized sector, there are these much of employees are organized sector, these much of employees are there. So facilities provided to the employer, commitment to industry, protective legislation, status of the workers, employment, partnership, etc. So these are the kind of the facilities to the employees. So next is the trade union.